That was the Burn Gallo to Irvine Clay Slurry. The locomotives were 37671 and 37672, two of St Blaise's Pool of Class 37 locomotives, now based at Cardiff. You'll be seeing more of those later. As long as sites such as that remain, Cornwall will always be a destination for the railway enthusiast. I have been taking photographs in Cornwall longer than I care to remember and have written a few books on the subject. In 1983 I produced a book called Diesels in the Duchy and those of you who have a copy will recognise this view behind me as Bodmin Parkway, formerly Bodmin Road and it was from about here that the cover photograph was taken from. In the period up to compiling my book the video camera was practically unheard of. The development of technology in this field has allowed this video to be produced which covers the period from the completion of Diesels in the Duchy up to the present day. The changes that have taken place during the last decade are astounding and although the landscape has remained unchanged many freight flows have been lost, local haul passenger trains have all but disappeared and many classes of diesel locomotive have been withdrawn. Fortunately a few dedicated enthusiasts recorded these changes and this video is the result of over 10 years work. So sit back and enjoy this tour of Cornish Railways. The main line from Saltash to Truro was not opened until 1859 under the control of the Cornwall Railway. In 1889 the GWR took control and in 1892 it was converted from broad to standard gauge. On leaving Saltash the line crosses Coombe Viaduct, the first of 30 in Cornwall, and follows a route north of the original line which crossed five wooden viaducts. The line now crosses three masonry structures, Forder, Liner and Tiddy. After Liner Viaduct, the line climbs steadily at an average of 1 in 90 towards Liscard. There can be no finer entrance to a county than the 2,200 foot Royal Albert Bridge, built by Brunel and opened on the 2nd of May 1859. There are 17 side spans and two main arches, each 455 foot wide, built locally at Devonport. The track is 100 feet above the water line and the foundations penetrate the ground to a depth of 90 feet, the overall height of the bridge being 260 feet. Seen crossing the bridge are 5007 and 5050 on the Terminator rail tour, their final outing before withdrawal. In the shadow of the Tamar Road Bridge is the first station in Cornwall. Saltash still retains the original Brunel buildings, but the only trains to stop nowadays are local services. Seen passing through the station are 37413 and 37672, with the instantly recognisable Burn Gallo to Irvin Clay Slurry. The slurry, being a waste product, is used in paper production. Note the siding branching off on the right. That led to the old goods shed.
Drifting round the corner from Weird Quay and the site of the now closed Defiance Station, before crossing Coombe Viaduct, are 47582 and 47779 with the Tuesdays only Penzance Long Rock Depot to Tavistock Junction empty fuel oil train. This particular service is under threat of being transferred to road transport. It is unusual in that it uses the locomotives off the 1V69 postal service from Newcastle and provides a very nice photographic opportunity. In the shadow of Tremayton Castle, 37521 and 37668, sporting petroleum livery, can be seen crossing Ford of Viaduct with the 0945 Burn Gallo to Irvine service. The peace and tranquillity of a Cornish spring morning is disturbed by this stranger. 37026 would be more at home working freight liners out of Felixstowe than this Tavistock Junction to St Blasey Engineers train, here crossing Tilly Viaduct just outside St Germans. This uninspiring building on the down platform of St German Station houses the first signal box in Cornwall. It utilises equipment from the old box which was closed on the 6th of May 1973. It acts as an interface between Plymouth and Liscarn. Running through the station are 37670 and 37668 in charge of the northbound silver bullet. On a misty morning, 37146 crosses Coldrinic Viaduct, where 12 men lost their lives during its 1897 rebuilding. The modest country station of Menheniot was the point at which passengers changed for road transport to Lou until the opening of the Lou branch. 43124 takes the up Cornish Riviera through the station and onto Coldrinic Viaduct. Liscard Viaduct is the highest in Cornwall at 154 feet. It is just to the east of Liscard Station and straddles the Lou Branch. 43020 leads the 0645 Penzance to Paddington with 43030 bringing up the rear. The original Lou branch was opened in 1860 as an extension of the Liscard and Carradine Railway, which also served Cheese Ring Quarry. It was not until 1901 that the branch was linked to the main line by a unique piece of railway engineering. The line climbs 150 feet in two miles, at gradients as severe as 1 in 38 in places, and turns to almost 360 degrees from Coombe Junction until reaching the terminus at Liscard, which is at right angles to the main line. Here we see unique liveried class 117 number 305 taking the branch prior to commencing its day's duties. Heritage DMUs are no longer used on this branch. Class 153s are the norm. It's also worth mentioning that the first sets of semaphore signals in Cornwall are all to be found at this card.
here seen ascending the 1 in 38 gradient from Coombe Junction and passing under Liscard Viaduct. His 37668, with a trip working from Moore's Water China Clay Dries. All that survives of the branch to Caradon is a three quarters of a mile spur into Moore's Water. Trains to the Dries are infrequent and run as requested. 37668 splits its train before entering the works. With Moore's Water Viaduct in the background, 37668 pours on the power past Coombe Junction to ascend the steep gradient to Liscard. There was once a fine signal box here with a superb collection of semaphores. Now all that remains is this small ground frame. Because of the gradients, no more than ten wagons can be taken at any one time. This shot dates back to April 1986 and shows 37247, later to become 37671, at Sand Place near Lou with the old Nomex Chipman's Weed Killer. On leaving Liscard, the line falls at 1 in 59 until reaching the majestic Moorswater Viaduct. The line then climbs up towards Double Boy Station, closed on the 5th of October 1964, before entering the Glyn Valley. There are no less than nine viaducts between Liscard and Bodmin and to minimise wear on St Pinnock and Largan viaducts, the line was singled in 1964 for a distance of approximately half a mile. At Bodmin, the now-preserved Bodmin and Wenford railway line branches away to the north and the main line continues to the west. Liscard boasts the only centre pivoted signal in Cornwall, and the signal box once controlled a yard which was to the right of 36, now on this empty ballast train. One hundred and forty-seven feet above the Moors Water Branch is thirty-seven eight one nine with the ECS for the Knight Rivera en route to Penzance. This more panoramic view shows thirty-seven six six nine and thirty-seven four one three crossing Moors Water Viaduct. The mist descends on St Pinnock Viaduct as forty-seven five one seven takes the O four ten parcels from Bristol through the Glen Valley. This was the highest of Brunel's original timber viaducts at one hundred and fifty-one feet. Twenty-six and three-quarter miles from Plymouth is Bodmin Parkway. 50.033 and 50.007 are in charge of the return leg of the Royal Duchy Rail Tour to Plymouth on 26th of September 1993.
At Bodmin Parkway, you can join the Bodmin and Wenford Private Railway, which follows the line of the original Bodmin and Wadebridge Railway as far as Bodmin General. This was the first passenger line in Cornwall and opened in 1834. 2166 operates a service to Bodmin Parkway near Charlie's Gate. There are a number of preserved diesels on the line. This was one of its first runs in preservation. Achilles pulls out of Bodmin with the early morning stopping service from Exeter to Penzance in May 1986. Vanguard approaches Respirin Bridge with the 1806 Penzance to Bristol. This train was known as the North Mail and is seen in June 1986. The Cornish Riviera has been running for over 90 years and can be seen passing Lost with Eel Golf Club on the 5th of August 1993. Lostwithiel is the junction for the ferry branch which closed to passenger traffic on the 4th of January 1965. The weather in Cornwall is very changeable. Battling through a summer storm with clay for Calm Point is 37412. The Foey branch runs along the west shore of the River Foey and is particularly picturesque. The only traffic along the branch now is China Clay to Khan Point, where it is loaded into ships for export. At one time the line continued into Foey and on to St Blasey. Freight traffic ran on this part of the line up until August 1968. Filmed from a field high above Lost Withiel, the Foey branch will clearly be seen in the foreground as 37413, with an additional oil working to Penzance, attacks Treveran Bank. Golant is the most photogenic spot on the branch, and once had a small halt. 37672 powers back to Lost Withiel with empty CDAs. On leaving Lost Withiel, trains have a two-mile climb up Treveran Bank at gradients as steep as 1 in 57. 
The summit is marked by a short tunnel, which is 565 yards long and is the third in the county. Immediately after leaving Treveran Tunnel, the line descends at 1 in 62 to par. Running into Lost Withiel is 37670 with a 1530 St Blasey to Exeter as 37412 pulls onto the main line with empties for Goom Barrow. The station has been modified beyond recognition. Only the signal box and semaphores remain. Disappearing in a cloud of smoke is 47636 with a Wednesday's only fuel oil train to Penzance. That was the outward leg of the Royal Duchy Rail Tour. 45117 on a Penzance Newcastle service descends Treveran Bank on the 29th of July 1985. Note the Foy branch in the foreground. Prior to the introduction of CDA wagons in February 1988, Clay was moved around the county by wooden-bodied OOV wagons, otherwise known as clay hoods. This vintage shot shows 37s, 247 and 207 nearing the summit of Treveran Bank and dates back to July 85. There are no less than 56 wagons on this train. To contrast with the previous shot, 37673 is seen at the same location but filmed at track level. One more shot from this location before moving on. 45062 is seen with the 0605 Bristol Penzance on the 27th of July 1985. Appearances of peaks by this time were very rare indeed. This extremely rare shot shows 45077 near Tris Mill in December 1983 with cement wagons from the now closed Chase Water cement sidings. Par is the junction for the Newquay branch, where 5044 takes the line to St Blasey with a freight from Truro on the 15th of May 1986. On July 11, 1983, Cornwall became a semi-independent network within BR. No time was wasted in adorning St Blaise's 37 with Cornish railway gradings. Here 37207, named after the man who first discovered clay in Cornwall, is seen wearing the Cornish Lizard logo. And 37196, named after a line from a poem referring to true Cornish names, is wearing the Cornish railway's headboard. Pairs of 50s were once commonplace, 24 and 25 take charge of the 1220 Penzance Paddington on the 17th of June 1985.
The branch to Newquay is 20 and a half miles long and easily the most interesting. After passing St Blazy Yard and the closed station, the line climbs for nine miles at gradients as steep as one in 40 through the beautiful Luxellian Valley, past the clayworks at Goon Barrow and on through Bugle and Roach. After this, the line falls steadily through open farmland, passing the now closed yards at St Dennis and then on through St Cullum Road to Quintral Downs and Newquay. The depot at St Blasey bears little resemblance to the original steam shed. The old roundhouse is now used as industrial units. The yard behind the shed is now the focal point of activity. 08792 is seen returning from a trip along the Par Dock branch. Heritage units are a thing of the past on this line. In fact, it is doubtful whether the line will see through holiday traffic again. Stopping to pick up the single line token from St Blasey Box is Class 122 bubble car number 55006 and a Class 101 driving trailer. Due to tight curves causing excessive wear on the wheel flanges, the skippers lasted just a few seasons. This example was filmed at St Blasey Gate on the 11th of July 1987. This part of the branch follows the line of the old canal which linked Ponce Mill Clayworks with St Blasey. 37671 eases its train away from the signals and across the A390. Locomotives can be heard for miles around climbing through the Luxalian Valley. 37672 passes under Treffery Viaduct, which carried a tramway linking Ponce Mill Works to Luxalian. The viaduct, built in 1842, also carried water for a water wheel, which powered a 1 in 10 rope incline, the site of which can still be seen today. Gunbarrow was the junction for the Gunheath branch and now serves a highly productive clayworks. Seen passing the GWR signal box are 5015, 5008 and 5033 on the Valiant Thunderer Rail Tour which ran on the 23rd of November 1991. Just before the station of Bugle was the Carbis Wharf branch which dispatched its last revenue earning train to Scotland on the 25th of August 1989. This shot is extremely rare and shows the Busby DMU on the branch on the 26th of April 1986. Class 50s were regular summer visitors to Newquay and always attracted a large following of enthusiasts. 5021 is seen at Goss Moor with the 0925 Newquay to Newcastle on the 11th of July 1987.
To mark the end of the 50s, two rail tours were run into Cornwall. The Cornish caper is seen crossing the A30 near Indian Queens, led by 50033 with 50050 and 50007 on the rear on the 19th of March 1994. The sidings at St Dennis lost their mainline connection in February 1992, and the signal box was demolished shortly after its closure in January 1987. 5002 passes the site en route to Newquay from Paddington on the 11th of July 1987. St Dennis was once linked to Burn Gallo by Park and Dillac, and it is planned to link these two again, running passenger trains to Newquay from St Austell, closing the line from St Dennis to Goon Barrow. On a very damp and windy morning on March the 19th, 1994, Glorious heads out of Newquay with a last class 50 hauled rail tour on the branch. On leaving Parr, the line climbs almost continuously to Burn Gallo. Just after leaving the station, the line crosses the short spur to Parr Docks. It was this line that originally linked St Blasey to Foey. The next major town served is St Austell, which once had its own motor rail terminal and semaphore signals but these were removed towards the end of 1979. Just west of the station was the southern end of the Gunheath branch. Exactly halfway between Salt Ash and Penzance, we reach Burn Gallo. This is the point at which the freight branch for Park and Dilek in the north leaves the main line. These clips from 1975 serve to remind us of two of the classes now withdrawn. The class 52s lasted until 1977, and the Class 25s were replaced by Class 37s in the autumn of 1980. Storming through the station is 37670, en route to Khan Point in October 1993. 50024 is seen climbing through St Austell near Carlion Bay on the 7th of April 1987 with the 0605 Bristol Penzance. There has recently been a review of parcel services in Cornwall and it is quite likely that RES will finish its association with the county. Letters and parcels being transferred by road to Plymouth. 47475 passes Carlisle Bay Golf Club with a 1400 Penzance to Paddington parcel service on the 21st of March 1994. Only the keenest of photographers can record shots of the Paddington to Penzance sleeper. 50024 passes the old goods yard near St Austell at 0700 on the 16th of May 1986. The yard opened on the 2nd of November 1931 and lasted up until the early 1980s. Days of through trains from Penzance to Brighton are long gone. Here, Benbow leaves St Austell on such a service on the 5th of August 1986. Shots such as this highlight how much the railways have changed over the last decade. This shot of 37235 was taken on the 16th of May 1986. Largin's signal box had no water supply and received its water daily in canisters. 
the driver of 5029 can be seen returning an empty canister from the box, which is now closed. This service is the 0800 Wolverhampton Penzance, and the date is 26th of April 1986. Once a year, the Chipman's Weed Killer train visits the county. Nowadays, it's operated by Class 20s, which stay with the train. But prior to April 1989, a local locomotive would be used. Here, 37196 powers up the 1 in 90 towards Burn Gullo on the 26th of April 1986. The Burn Gallo to Sittingbourne clay liner was once a familiar sight, but this train ceased to run in 1985. 47309 has control on the 15th of April 1984. It's seen passing the unmodified Burn Gallo sidings. During 1987-88, the yards at Burn Gallo underwent major redevelopment, and as a result, many trains are staged there. The yard pilot shunts two PVAs which will form part of the evening departure to Cliff Vale. Towards the end of 1993, these two 37s were involved in a shunting accident and were awaiting the removal to crew for repair. Replacement worker 37668 is seen passing by with a working from Park and Dillon. Freight branch to the north of Burn Gallo once continued onto St Dennis Junction and Newquay. Now the four and a half mile line serves the clay works at Park and Dillock and Drinick Mill. This is true China clay country and is dominated by the massive white spoil heaps. For every tonne of clay produced, there are seven tonnes of waste comprising of sand, rock and earth. In old rail freight livery, 37669 passes Krugwallin sidings with a short freight from Park and Dillac on the 20th of June 1989. A Class 50 on a freight turn was always a scoop. The class did more than their share in Cornwall. Exeter is seen near Lamjeth with a trip working from Drinick Mill. In September 1987, 5049 underwent conversion with CP7 bogies and down rated to 2,400 horsepower. It was hoped the loco would be suitable for heavy freights. However, lack of sanding gear and wheel slip detection equipment meant the trials were not entirely successful, and 5149 returned to 5049 in February 1989. This shot was filmed during September 1988 and shows defiance leaving Drinick Mill en route for St Blasey. Possibly the rarest working of the 90s occurred when a 56 was on loading trials in Cornwall. On 27th of February 1990, 56013 reached Park and Dillac. The 56 penetrated deep inside the works. These lines have now been closed and the wagons are loaded outside the works.
The station of Burn Gully was closed on the 14th of September 1931, and on the 5th of October 1986, the main line was singled as far as Probus. At the same time, the single box was closed and used for permanent way staff. The line undulates towards Truro through lush farmland, passing the closed stations of Grandpan Road and Probus. Closed on the 5th of October 64 and the 2nd of December 54 respectively. Before reaching Truro, the line passes through two tunnels, Polpero and Buckshead. 5042 powers past Burn Gallo signal box with the Penzance Brighton on the 26th of April 1986. Grandpan Road once had sidings and a signal box. 43141 heads the 1445 Penzance to Paddington. Freight traffic is very scarce west of Burngallo. The only regular flow is the Wednesdays only fuel oil train, seen here with 47595. At Probus, exactly 44 miles from Saltash, the line becomes double again. With the 1400 parcels to Paddington, 47597 attacks the 7 mile 1 in 67 bank to Grand Pound Road. The longest viaduct in Cornwall is the 1300 foot Truro viaduct. Seen crossing it is a 158 forming the 1240 Penzance to Plymouth service. Truro is 300 miles from London via Bristol. It once had a busy depot and regular freight services. The most recent to finish was the Insta Truro fertiliser train. Class 158s are now too common, and this one en route to Milford Haven passes by the former Truro East box. Falmouth was originally intended as the terminus for the Cornwall Railway Company. The fact that the West Cornwall Railway Company had started running a service from Penzance to Truro as early as 1852 meant that by the time the line to Falmouth was opened in 1863, it became no more than a branch. From 1855 to 1859, a new station was constructed at its present site, and the West Cornwall Railway merged with the Cornwall Railway. At Penwithers Junction, the line to Falmouth runs straight on, the distance to Falmouth being 11 and a quarter miles. This station at Falmouth was originally closed in 1970, and a new halt nearer the town was opened. However, the station was reopened in May 1975 and is now known as Falmouth Docks. This DMU is heading back to Falmouth on October 25th, 1985. The distance from Truro to St Earth is 20 and a quarter miles. The line climbs steadily to Redruth at gradients of 1 in 80 and then falls through Camborne and Hale. The countryside starts to change quite dramatically towards Redruth and is littered with relics of old tin mine engine houses. The line also passes through many closed stations. Chase Water from Wera Branch left to Newquay, Carn Bray for Pontreath, and Gwynia Road for Helston. Cornwall has always been a great destination for rail tours. On the 8th of June 1986, 20.054 and 20.011 reached Truro with the Chopper Topper. The tour was worked forward to Falmouth by 37.207. To the east of the site of Chasewater Station is Blackwater Viaduct. Up until 1987, there was a cement distribution point here, which received a daily train from Pimstock. 47.079 crosses the viaduct with the 1A90 parcels to Paddington.
The first railway to be built in Cornwall was the Poldies to Portreath horse-drawn tramway, which linked copper mines in the Scoria and St Day areas. Passing Scoria is the 1235 from Paddington, which in turn passes the return leg of the Terminator rail tour. Redruth Station has so far escaped modernisation and still retains its original buildings. The rocky ridge of Carnbray dominates the skyline between Redruth and Campbell. Carnbray Castle can be seen clearly as 43010 continues on to Penzance. The last working tin mine in Cornwall is South Crofty. Passing within sight of the wheelhouse is 47707. The local office train will be used for the 1937 TPO to Leeds. Forty-seven seven zero four has charge of the afternoon parcels to Paddington and is seen passing Dolcoth milk silos. Dolcoth mine is the deepest in the county, penetrating underground to a depth of half a mile. Camborne is not the most picturesque part of Cornwall, but its importance as an industrial area is unrivalled. The signal box at the old Ruskier Junction controls barriers to the east of the station. 43152 accelerates through the station with the 1445 to Paddington. When a station is given the name road, it normally means it is miles away from the town it serves. Such was the case with Gwinia Road, which was the junction for the Helston branch. The last passenger train ran in 1962, and the station closed on the 5th of October 1964. 43172 has charge of the Down Cornish Rivera. The 680-foot viaduct at Hale dominates the area. The station in the background no longer has its signal box, which was identical to the one at Dawlish and the key branch has been closed since 1981. Fearless, Hercules and Glorious head for Penzance with a Cornish caper rail tour. St Earth retains a lot of its Cornish charm and passing beneath the semaphores is a Class 47 en route to Penzance. The branches and knives open on the 1st of June 1877. Prior to that date, St Earth was also known as St Ives Road. There is a major creamery at St Earth, but since 1980, milk has ceased to be moved by rail. The branch is just over four miles long, serving Lelant and Carbis Bay. The steepest section is from Lelant to Carbis Bay, rising at 1 in 60. The first and last time 50s traversed the St Ives branch. During the winter 1993-94 timetable, there were no less than 18 trains in each direction a day. This is the last branch to be operated by heritage stock DMUs, but even these are on borrowed time. Lera's touring trio take the Cornish caper past Carbis Bay. The original station at St Ives was demolished in 1971 in favour of a car park, and a new platform was erected further from the town. In the blazing heat of a summer afternoon, two class 122s and a three car 177 head back to St Earth.
We are now only five miles and 52 chains from Penzance. On leaving St. Earth, the line climbs for half a mile at one in 67, and then gently falls, crossing from the north coast to the south coast in three and three quarter miles. On reaching the south coast, we pass the derelict station of Marazion, which closed in October 1964. The line then follows the coastline on a single line section from Long Rock to Penzance, a distance of one and a half miles. Passing the new HST depot, built during 1979-1980. Penzance is 75 and a quarter miles from Salt Ash and 326 and a half miles from Paddington via Bristol. It's a fine counterpart to Brunel's London terminus. Class 101, number 842, climbs out of St. Earth with a local to Penzance. The first land that Atlantic storms hit is West Cornwall. In the shadow of St. Michael's Mount on this stormy day is Marazion Station. The old Pullman holiday coaches are slowly rusting away and are at the mercy of the elements. The 1630 to Penzance races by Marazion. After refuelling at Long Rock, 50.050 and 33 head back to the terminus before working the return leg of the Cornish Caper. The annual visit of the Chipman's Weed Killer train approaches the terminus. The station as it stands was opened by the GWR in 1879. But since that time, several modifications have taken place, the most significant being the land reclamation, which facilitated the building of the extra yards in 1937. The terminus has always been a destination for rail tours, one of the more famous being the Penzance Fire featuring D200 from the 9th of November, 1985. More recently, the Class 50s have had their final fling, and 5033 is seen on its penultimate outing on the 19th of March, 1994. It's not inconceivable in the age of privatisation that before too long the only trains to reach Penzance will be Class 158s. Class 47s are now the only diesel locomotives to regularly visit the terminus, but for how much longer? Penzance is not the end of the line, at least not for 47714, but merely the start as it departs with the 1937 TPO for Leeds.
Thank <laughs> you. 